or yeah, can, Fred, um, or Frederick. Or, or Frederick. Yeah, um, I think the <laughs> there's a bigger picture than what I worked on. I did some uh, some interop with the AMT, um, which I can go over. Uh, but then I think the free rider uh, people did some beer work as well, if I if I remember right. So it might be good to at least get Frederick in there. But I'm happy to supplement on AMT as well. Uh, Frederick, um, are you on and would you like to give an update on the hackathon? Well, actually, the, the hackathon uh, took place and... Uh, well, not, not uh, yet, basically. but can you when we get to that part? Ah, you mean? Uh, but the, the thing is that uh, in the hackathon, uh, the the topic was not related to ah. to multicast. Okay. So that's gotcha. Unfortunate. Um. Okay. Can everyone see my slide, my agenda slide, and note well? Is that visible? Yes. Great. Okay. So we've got a note taker. Um, I'm not sure if there's a need for a job or scribe, but would we want? Would we like one of those? Um, Warren, you seem to be. In the past, you've uh, done an exceptional job at job or scribery. Happy to do. Okay. Thank you, Warren. Yeah, I don't think we've had much for the Jabber Scribe to do uh, recently since we've. Yep, that's why I'm happy to do it. <laughs> okay, um, I think we're getting to quorum here. Uh, we have a note taker. Uh, we have a Jabber Scribe. Um, and I think we have all of our presenters on. And we have a healthy list of attendees. So let's get started. First, uh, welcome to IETF 13, 113 uh, in Vienna. You're in the MBONE-D meeting. Hopefully you intended to be here. If not, welcome aboard. You're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, the best part of this meeting today is I can guarantee we will be done early. Um, here is a note well. Um, as always, please note all of these things well um, and pay close attention to the recent focus on uh, respectful participation. Um, and meeting tips, you've probably seen this by now, uh, though not in purple, and I'm not quite sure it came in purple, but it is. Um, for those of you for whom it is very early, this might help serve to wake you up a little bit more effectively. Uh, but everybody, even if you're in the room, uh, should be signed into the Meet Echo tool. That's how we will manage the mic queue. Um, and remote participants, uh, you guys have all been participating remotely, so I think you guys know what to do. Okay, here's our agenda. Uh, we'll go through the working group items. Um, there'll be a brief, very brief update on the hackathon. There was a little bit of work done. Uh, most of it was not related to multicast, so that'll go quickly. Um, Sandy is going to give an update on the uh, redundant ingress failover draft. Um, and then Jake will uh, go through all of his various drafts as well as a W3C update. Uh, anything to add? Anything I missed? Anything to bash on this agenda? Okay, moving right along. Um, in terms of acting active working group documents, 
Um, the Yang models, uh, since last meeting, there were, a court, um, uh, Sandy mentioned, there's no substantive updates, uh, but she is seeking uh, one more really good review, uh, not one more, uh, one more round of really good reviews. Um, so if folks have the time, we would love, uh, we would love for folks to review this document. Um, Sandy, do you have anything else you want to add about that document? You are, how do I? Okay. Oh. Yep, Sandy, yes. you can go. Mm. Okay, uh, last year, uh, I uh, we updated the draft according to uh, some comments from Jax and uh, Gian. Uh, so we'd like to uh, find more uh, review, uh, especially from Jax and uh, Gian for it. So uh, thank you for advance. Great. Yep. And uh, any other folks who are interested in Yang models, we also encourage you uh, in addition to Gian and uh, Jake. Uh, the telemetry draft, um, I got an update from the authors. Uh, they are about to update it soon. Uh, it, there are some several drafts upon which this document depends that are in working group last call and other working groups uh, and that should be completed soon um, so once that gets done uh, they will update and uh, they plan to present this in ietf uh, 114. Um, i don't know that we have anybody else uh, oh actually mike mike did you want to say anything else about what i just uh, about the telemetry draft yeah that other working group is IPPM, it's IP performance uh, group, and um, performance management group. And uh, they're the ones that are handling the unicast versions of this draft. And so that those are the drafts that this draft is dependent upon. So um, as they progress, which they should soon, then we can progress this one. Uh, we did, last time we updated this, uh, added a couple other authors and they made some good contributions. And the, once the other drafts do progress in IPB, IPPM, uh, we probably will pretty quickly ask for this one to be reviewed and progress because when we submitted this draft, it was actually, it's, it's one of those rare drafts that when we submitted it, it's almost ready to go kind of a thing. Um, so anyway, yeah, we'll, 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 we keep it alive and we give minor updates to it and we will present it as you mentioned at the next ITF. Jake, you have something to add? There's implementations. Say that one more time. Uh, when you said that's ready to go, do you mean that, that there's implementations or? No, that it's complete as far as the work in the draft is concerned. I don't okay. think that this working group has a requirement for implementations, but I could be wrong. Great, thanks. Um, then there are, of course, the multicast of the browser drafts, uh, the four, um, and Jake's going to provide updates on this later in the agenda, or later. Um, he's next up. Uh, the ingress, um, redundant ingress failover, this is a document that is um, currently uh, has an adoption call underway. Um, and actually, um, uh, and, and that uh, working group adoption call goes through this Friday. Um, so, so far we've had uh, a number, I haven't counted, but there has been some responses, but we'd love to have more. Um, please, it's a short draft, please do take a look and respond whether you would or would not like to adopt uh, and any substantive comments as well. Um, and actually, I believe Sandy is going to talk about this next. So, um, let's see what else, what's up on the agenda? Okay, next up on the agenda is a hackathon update. Um, so Frederick, I, I believe you said the component of the hackathon that you were involved in was not multicast related. Um, so if that's the case, maybe Jake, if you wanna, if you wanna speak up about what you're aware of. Sure. Um... So I spent the hackathon weekend uh, 
getting IPv6 to work with the um, with the AMT gate AMT gateway Docker container, um, and uh, uh, it, running that against um, against my own relays. Um, so I got I did uh, successfully stream and listen to music over uh, v4 in v4 tunnel v6 in v4 tunnel v6 in v6 tunnel and v6 in uh, v4 in v6 tunnel so all the combinations um, in addition earlier today um, Saba pinged me on the uh, free router chat and we did a bit of interop uh, with their implementation as well. Um, the free router AMT gateway was able to connect to my relays and success also successfully listen to music over all four of those uh, combinations. And then um, so far, this was only a uh, half an hour ago, um, but so far I've got, uh, I've tried um, V4 over V4 and V6 over V4 against uh, their stream and their, um, and their relay, uh, and I, I have yet to try the uh, the two over the V6 relays yet, uh, but that's anticipated. There was like, there were like a couple of bugs. Um, so if you have it, both on mine uh, and on um, on theirs, I think that that there was an update from Saba. I, I don't know like what their kind of um, commit process is like, but I think I think the one he's running now is uh, has a quick patch in it. Um, and maybe that'll be upstreamed appropriately. Uh, anyway, the um, yeah, so the the um, the AMT gateway Docker container and the AMT relay D now are both confirmed with uh, with them. You know, each of those talking to themselves and uh, and to the free router implementation for v6 and v4. I think uh, with with one uh, set of tests still pending. So, so but, uh, and that's that's really all uh, all I know about. Cool. Um, so Jake, uh, first, let this start sending. Here. Um, so Jake, uh, the uh, essentially what what was added and what's new and what's unique is the um, AMT relay and V six enabled relay and gateway. Uh, you didn't make any changes to FF uh, MPEG or um, VLC. Those just worked. Uh, yeah, that's that's correct. Those those just worked. Um, so this is, of course, with an external gateway, not the embedded uh, re a gateway inside VLC. But um, uh, with the external relay, then those those just work for uh, for both V4 and V6 SSM. I did not try ASM, but I don't care so gotcha I, I'm willing to try it if somebody else wants wants to but I haven't tried it yet I, I think it'll be fine because for the for the client side it's going to be very um, identical great anybody else involved in the hackathon have anything to add uh, any other background or commentary that, that is related to the multicast okay uh, in that case, uh, let's move on to Sandy. Um, and I will bring up those slides. Okay. Sandy, can you see the slide? And you are ready to yes. go. And uh, I believe you should have control over this slide, I think. Can you? I can. If I can control the slides, um, this is uh, share your, your is sharing your screen. And uh, I can do the control work. I'm not very sure. How can I do it? Are you able to? Um, I think I can't. No, no. There. How about now? Let me try. It's, it seems I can't move it. I can't page it down. No luck. 
this doesn't work now no work okay all right you just tell me and i'll i'll uh i'll take uh okay let me redo this again okay thank you okay um, hello everyone and i'm sending down from zte uh, this presentation is for the update of multicast redundant ingress router fail overdraft uh, we have co-author greg Yisong from china mobile and uh, in chen from china unicom next please uh, hold on a second here doesn't seem to want to let me move this thing. So um, this is the brief introduction of this draft. Uh, usually two ingress routers are deployed for avoiding uh, single node failure. And the two ingress router can forward a same multicast flow. For the egress routers, which connect the receivers, they can select the UMH for uh, multicast flow forwarding. Uh, there are three modes can be used for uh, ingress routers uh, protection for or faster switch over. Uh, there are cool standby modes and the uh, warm standby mode and the hot standby mode. Uh, the three uh, standby modes can be used with all the existed multicast technologies such as PIM, Beer, P2MPT eternal or MLBP. Uh, the cost and the influence of the three modes are different. The network administrator should select the appropriate mode according to the service requirements. Hey, seems I can page down the slides. Okay, okay, I can do the control. It's work now. So uh, this is the update of uh, version 02. Uh, we added a section for failure detection according to Jake's comments. Uh, thanks, Jake. Um, in order to achieve the successful IR switch over, uh, BFD or ping methods can be used for monitor the IR node failure or pass failure between IR and the ERs. For BFT methods, uh, BFD uh, FC5880 can be used in all the deployments. Uh, Multipoint BFD uh, FC8562 can be used, can also be used for the failure detection between IR and the ERs. BFD for MPRS LPS, uh, that is FC5884, can be used in P2MPT internal or MRDP deployments. Uh, BR BFD can be used in BR deployment. Uh, for pin methods, uh, IPv4 pin uh, FC0792 uh, and the IPv6 pin FC4443 can also be used in all the deployments. Uh, RSP pin FC8029 can be used for P2MPT internal or MRDP deployments. Uh, BR pin can also be used in BR deployment. So backup for IR and ER can detect the selected IR node and the pass failure easily by these methods. When ER detects the failure of SIR, uh, ER must signal to BIR as soon as possible, or ER can get the flow from BIR in advance. Uh, when BIR detects the failure of SIR, BIR takes over the SIRs responsibility and forwards flow to ERs. Uh, but the mistaken switch over may occur because in case uh, only one only the path between BIR and the SIR fails, uh, in this situation ER may receive a duplicate flow. So mm, oh, so this is the uh, during the adoption call. Uh, we receive many useful comments. Uh, thanks, Jake, and again, uh, we plan to add more information and details in future version. Uh, we will add the signaling procedure for of the three modes between IR and ER to make it more clearly. 
uh, details will be added for the existed optimization method used in failure detection. Uh, for example, so for example, uh, RFC uh, nine zero two six and some clarification for MVPN and non-MVPN deployment will be added. Uh, and some language improvement will be done. So, so uh, thanks for all the support and uh, we welcome more comments for it. Uh, that's all, thank you. For Sandy? Hey, yes. Okay, uh, thank you for sharing. Um, and just a reminder, again, this is still uh, in the adoption call um, till Friday. So uh, please, um, we'd love folks to review and, um, and uh, at least mention whether you support or do not support adoption uh, of this document by the working group. Jake, uh, are you ready to talk for your next, or are you, do you have a question about this draft? I did actually have a, a question about this draft. Uh, same, same question, actually. Um, is there an implementation along these lines? Like open daylight or uh, any production environments that, that you're basing this on, or is this more theoretical at this point? Mm. In fact, there are many, uh, yes, because uh, there are many technologies included in this draft, and we have deployed some um, technologies such as PIN, uh, and the beer has not been used widely, so uh, there is no beer deployment for it, but there are many PIN deployment for it. So we usually use uh, uh, warm standby or sort of hot standby mode for deployment. So um, for um, hot standby mode, there is duplicate flow in the uh, network. So uh, there is, uh, there, uh, it can only be used in very um, large broadband network. So, uh, and if there is some network that is, has no very, very uh, large uh, band, uh, where one is also, the um, maybe the just uh, warm standby or cold standby mode can be used for it. Uh, and generally, uh, PIM is used more than other technologies. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, now I'm ready, Lenny. Do you want me to okay. step out or? No. Yeah. Um, let me Let's add your, see. bring your slides up. I think I can request, I can share some preloaded slides. Does that work? Actually, you do have the power to do that, but um, no, I, I just did it for you here. Uh, let's go here. Okay. Now, are you able to control? Let's see, I thought, oh, there we go. Oh. Yes, share. Awesome. Okay. And I think I had that. Excellent. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll be talking about the uh, four active drafts and basically where things stand in terms of uh, this, this project uh, for what we're doing. Um, what I'll be going over is uh, kind of progress reports. Uh, I had a few things I talked about um, that I was waiting to see how they panned out. Uh, that I had mentioned in the IETF update. Um, so I'll be giving the follow-ups on those. I'll be going over the overall project status and uh, giving a, a brief overview of the things that are um, sort of actively in progress right now. Uh, I, I would say there's a number of things kind of in the background that I won't, won't really be touching on, but um, uh, the, the sort of major standards-based pieces of it that are um, that I know of that are making some progress. Uh, and then I'll conclude with uh, my uh, requests for actions that I'd like to people to consider and uh, and hopefully take uh, going forward for, for what's 
like kind of going on now or imminently. Um, so the, the follow-ups from IETF 112 were kind of negative. Uh, I, um, you know, the outcome of the SEC dispatch discussion was that the uh, discussion on, on the multicast security document was uh, dispatched to the MSEC list. I sent out invites, but uh, nobody responded to anything yet. Um, so uh, that was a bit disappointing. I think it indicates there is no way I'm asking for a buff at present. Um, however, this uh, the sort of you know, direction we outlined here, uh, I think we did get um, a little bit of useful feedback from uh, raising it there, and that uh, that feedback and the uh, sort of our thinking that went into this draft is is still guiding uh, what we intend to do um, in the in the near term towards uh, still getting still reaching the browser use case uh, eventually. Um, but I, I think I do consider this a, a mild setback for the moment. Um, likewise, the uh, W3C web transport uh, working group was, I, I had an issue open with them uh, requesting, um, requesting that they would add multicast as a use case uh, from the W3C side. They rejected it uh, on two points. One is that um, they, are uninterested unless there's browsers expressing an interest, and uh, the it's also premature. Um, at least that was in the minutes of their meeting. Uh, the comments indicated that uh, this really needs IETF work before W3C can consider taking it on. Um, so that that is driving part of the work that we're uh, that we're moving forward with now as well. Uh, Lenny, I see you in the queue. Yeah, so maybe this is a question for for uh, um, Warren as well. Uh, advice here. It, it seems like we have a lot of circular dependencies here uh, that we're trying to bring add this to the browser. The browser people are saying there's not enough people are asking for this. There's not enough demand. There's not enough IETF activity on this, uh, and 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 yet. We seem to be generating IATF activity and interest. Um, so, how do we kind of break through this log jam? And is there something we as a working uh, and so maybe a question to Warren as well? Is there something we as a working group can be providing as feedback to say, hey, this would be valuable? Um, there's, there's, we've got operators have spoken up, um, and uh, several other folks have spoken up that this is interesting, and yet. Um, you know, there seems to be a little bit less uh, uh, agreement um, from others on that. So, what do you what do you suggest, both Jake and and um, Warren? Uh, so, for the first thing, let me suggest that we uh, that we table that till the end of the uh, till the last slide where I'm asking for actions, um, and uh, and because I do have one related thing that I'll uh, that I'd like to. To discuss, and we can discuss whether there's a better thing to do or what the kind of ideas are gotcha. in this space. Um, but uh, let me first just kind of paint the whole picture overall and tell you where I'm headed and what I think is the right kind of response to this. But I, I am happy to take suggestions and feedback. Uh, Warren, anything you want to throw on top of that? No, hopefully you've got a good idea for the uh, suggested actions, because I don't. All right, uh, great. Then, um, uh, and I, I, I do want to say it's this criticism that it requires IETF work first um, is not necessarily saying that, uh, as, as I understand it, is not necessarily saying that there's no IETF interest. It's rather saying that uh, the work to make this viable for web transport has not yet occurred in the IETF. And so the W3C web transport cannot uh, reasonably consider it. So that that was my take on it. Um, now, whether that will go forward or whether we'll hit a similar wall when I try to take this to quick, uh, that is that is to be determined. And that's where I was going to, uh, to go with that question, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, anyway, so in light of these kind of setbacks, our current strategy is to begin some 
uh, we're aiming to do some production deployment that's going to be uh, deployment of, uh, so I, I don't know if it'll be interdomain in the very first run, but we are aiming to do some interdomain multicast production deployment uh, without browser support. Um, and under the understanding that in the long term, we still are going to need to get to the browser. Um, but we think that, you know, in the in the beginning, I was kind of thinking in terms of um, if we can get some browser support that's that's there on the way, then this will uh, make it more attractive to ISPs, which I think is true. Um, however, I think the other way also goes, the other way around also applies. If we can make this, uh, if we can get some traffic running uh, in some real ISPs, then it will make it more attractive to browsers. Um, so, you know, as always with multicast, we have a chicken and egg problem and we're trying to address it and we can address it kind of on either side. Um, but I think that they, they support one another, right? First, you make a thing that's not quite a lizard, but also isn't yet a chicken. And that lays an egg that has a, that, that grows into a chicken, right? So, um, anyway, uh, we are, we are not abandoning that effort, but, uh, I, I do. I do consider this a, uh, a minor setback, but I think this is not unexpected when encountering security uh, feedback for the first time. So that's that's where that stands. Um, so in terms of overall project status, uh, and this is kind of the um, you know the Akamai funding ish view, uh, we have moved this project out of R and D and into a product team, and we're trying to now. Uh, find the right set of partners uh, or, or even single partner to m take this forward into a production run uh, that we can start deploying. But we think we've convinced ourselves that this has a real business case um, and that that's not uh, that's not quite the same as, as me, engineering hacker, uh, saying it sounds like a good idea. That's more like the people who tried to shoot it down uh, because that's their job, you know, uh, ended up concluding that, OK, this probably is worth looking at in, in more detail. And uh, provided we can get some partners, the intent is to go ahead with this um, as of now. So we are um, we are in talks with a few partners uh, and, uh, and looking to make that work out. If other people think that they'd be good partners for this too, then we'd be happy to, to engage with them as well. Uh, so anybody here that, that, wants to, um, that wants to ping me about that, please do feel free and we can talk about it. I can get you in touch with the right people. Um, so uh, yeah, we're aiming to get like some traffic running uh, within the next one or two years. Um, probably we'd start that out in, uh, you know, some, some limited networks um, for the first few runs and then uh, expand it out into the generalized interdomain stuff. At least that's the plan. Um, and we are we are still aiming to uh, to address both software downloads and video, um, so that is uh, that is key to to kind of making those peak offloads be actually addressable for for the networks and for ourselves. Um, so uh, in terms of getting to the browser ultimately, which we like I said do still consider a very important uh, thing to solve in the end. Um, I, we've just started uh, a, a, a a draft that tries to extend Quick. Um, this tries to build on the Quick multi-path that was uh, very recently adopted in the Quick working group, um, and uh, it, it's I mean it'll be different because it's going to be multicast, but it actually has kind of a lot of overlap with uh, the, the kinds of things they're discovering in the quick working group about uh, about multicast as they do the implementation and evaluation. Um, so we're hoping to leverage some of that work. And we're also hoping that this will actually make it simpler at the application layer um, because it's going to be uh, at least mostly transparent to the, um, to the uh, web applications that would be making use of it. So they don't they won't have to do anything special except maybe like enable it or disable it at the high level and sort of permit the underlying stack to use multicast or not use multicast. But that's the intent, the intended direction we're going. Uh, as a rough overview, I I have the link to our GitHub repo where we've 
posted a, an early version of the draft. This doesn't have much content. It's just a um, like the abstract and intro and outline and a few consideration, a few security considerations, including a link to the uh, uh, to the other document. So none of this is adopted, and there are many ways this could go wrong. But this is our current plan for how to to move this forward. Um, we'd be baking it into Quick, so it's going to be built on a um, on a, a unicast connection as your sort of anchor uh, that provides all the security guarantees and uh, and probably uh, in a similar way to Ambi, the um, you know stream of hashes. Um, but that'll be um, uh, you know, instructing the client to, you know, if you are uh, willing and able, go ahead and join this multicast stream. You'll be receiving quick packets. They'll be encrypted. Uh, they'll um, uh, hopefully match up with our uh, with our security considerations uh, for multicast uh, insights, and uh, and then uh, they'll be interpreted as as um, you know, just just another. Uh, unidirectional data stream on the quick side. So we think we can transport, um, or we think it makes really good sense to transport uh, unidirectional web transport streams from server to client this way, and also um, uh, probably H3, uh, the, the server push uh, for web objects. Unfortunately, browsers are removing the server push cache um, and the server push feature uh, from browsers right now. Um, however, uh, through the web transport um, unidirectional streams, it still should be possible to kind of implement that yourself as inside your web app. Um, so, you know, ultimately we'll hopefully have demos of this and and some stuff running and a, a coherent document to present. Um, Lucas Pardue has agreed to co-author this. He's the he's the first author on the. Um, on the other uh, multicast over quick HTTP draft. This is a little bit different because this is gonna be operating at the quick layer, whereas that one was operating at the HTTP layer um, and using alt service, whereas this one will be using quick frames. There'll be new quick frames, uh, kind of loosely based on the on the multipath approach. But um, uh, this, this is where we're headed. Uh, as a <laughs> very tentative target, which I probably shouldn't put in because this is perhaps optimistic. Um, I, I was hoping to uh, get a prototype and initial spec uh, to present in July to the Quick Working Group. We'll see how that goes. This could be superseded by the by our. Um, if I have to spend a lot of time on the uh, on the uh, partner deployment efforts, uh, which actually would be even better than than this in terms of uh, making this project a success. Um, but I do think that this is an important thing to uh, to have on the roadmap for um, how we get into the browser, and this is our current kind of plan. Uh, so this could slip, but I am hoping to have something coherent to present in July, uh, and if not, then uh, then maybe later this year. Uh, yeah, so that's that's where the browser effort stands. Um, I want to say thanks to Max uh, for a bunch of uh, feedback and PRs on the Ambi uh, draft. Uh, that is slowly coming into shape. I've been a little distracted and haven't haven't done a whole lot on actually advancing these documents. I've been working more toward uh, getting deployment to be viable, um, but it is ultimately obviously going to be very important to have this well documented. Um, and I think he's, uh, his contributions have really helped to shape it up. Uh, and um, yeah, I, it's still kind of undetermined whether the quick will reference this one or do something a little bit different but similar or what exactly. But that'll be kind of hammered out as, as we get the quick thing farther along. But I, I was really glad to see that Ambi is actually progressing a little bit, uh, which was nice. Um, in other news, the uh, uh, we have still been meeting regularly at the W3C Multicast Community Group. I encourage you all to join. Uh, there's a um, there's a uh, link to the w3.org/community/multicast uh, here. Um, and even if you're just on the mailing list, um, or if you take a look at the meeting minutes or recordings, 
then you'll be getting monthly updates on this. So if you're interested in watching, then uh, then keep an eye on it. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know I'm I'm getting some code contributions from some of the uh, some of the multicast community group members, which I'm really pleased about. Uh, so thanks in particular to Gavin Henry uh, for some of his work on libmcrx. Um, he's uh, he's taking a look at, at adding Windows support, which is great. Uh, but what we've already upstreamed from that was uh, was uh, integration, the CI/CD pipeline integrated Coverity uh, scanning. So it is now scanning for uh, problems and, and uh, vulnerabilities of, uh, that it can do a static analysis. And uh, it found several errors that we uh, that we fixed in libmcrx. So that is in better shape now than it was, uh, and rates to remain in better shape as we extend it further. Um, that's a that's meant to be a cross-platform SSM received library, um, and I, I frequently use it for for my testing. Um, but uh, we can go into more details about what that has. Uh, I've talked about it before in the group, but not recently. Um, yeah. So in conclusion, the uh, the things I'd like to to consider doing as a working group. Uh, for one, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and start the dorms last call. I think I haven't had any more uh, reviews. Um, so if I'm not going to get any, then we might as well go ahead. Uh, I think it's in reasonable shape, if I remember right. Um, it's, uh, uh, I, I didn't actually read it all the way through last month. Um, but uh, uh, last I looked, uh, I didn't have any notes left on it, I think. Um, I believe I've, I've incorporated all the comments that have been made so far. Um, second is I'd like to make dorms ambient CBAC into a cluster uh, so that the uh, they can refer to each other and get handled in a sort of clustering way for the RFC editor. Um, uh, if anyone is able, uh, please do post to MSAC at IETF in response to the uh, uh, discussion about the security considerations document. Um, I think even just asking stupid questions and getting some discussion going would be a useful uh, expression of interest there. <clears throat> and uh, and we might be able to learn some things and, and understand more about uh, the, the right problem space, especially if we can get uh, any, any of the existing security experts on that list to kind of engage as well. Um, uh, so for the other is the um, MNAT, I think the only feedback I've gotten so far was that it looks pretty good, well thought out. Um, you know, I, I looked through it and there's uh, there's eight things I have marked as TBDs. Uh, I did not actually address those, but what I propose is that I should address those eight TBDs and then, uh, and then open it up for last call or at least get some more reviews going, um, you know, one of those. Uh, and I don't think it's had enough review, honestly, yet. Um, although I was encouraged by the people who did respond so far, so that was uh, that was good. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, and and maybe set a timer to reconfirm. But um, when they ask for conflict avoidance for the meeting scheduling, let's make sure we don't collide with Quick next time if we can, so I can make it to both uh, if that's still on the table. Um, like I said, there's a chance this will slip. So if it slips, then then maybe I'll want to move that request to November or something. Um, and then, uh, but then, uh, and here's where we get back to the um, to the original comment that we deferred till now. Uh, Lenny previously offered on the list, like, should we as a working group request that something security area or uh, or transport area, or the quick working group, or whoever is the right uh, set of people, but but uh, express to them that this is a valuable use case um, from the point of view of the M O and D working group in some official manner, and uh, ask them to to engage and evaluate uh, with the work. Um, and I think that the answer is yes. Once we have a concrete proposal, we do not really yet, but. Uh, but if this is if this is a worthwhile direction, um, then I think that that's where uh, that's where it would be really valuable. I guess we might have something concrete to ask about with the 
uh, with the security considerations, but uh, I think it was a fair point that that um, they want to have an actual proposal for the protocol we're we're proposing uh, for transporting web traffic over multicast in order to consider, um, and that that is like it's it's hard to really get good security considerations in the abstract. So, uh, so it's a fair point, but, um, you know, I, I, I leave that to, uh, to further questioning really. Um, so that's all I've got. So yeah, how about Lenny? Let's, let's hear what you have to say. Sounds good to me. No. Um, I, I think you covered it all. You answered my questions. So. Okay. Um, questions, questions from anyone else uh, for Jake? Well, let me ask Warren. Uh, you said you were hoping I had a good idea. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. Uh, it's, it's an idea. <laughs> so yeah, Warren, Kamari, Google. Yeah, I mean, at least it's an idea. I don't know of a better one. Um, other than just like continuing to people, this is the best idea ever and hope that they pay attention. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I really do think that that the interest level will rise if there are ISPs that are doing delivery of interdomain multicast. Um, my take is that uh, you know right now there's there's high skepticism that this will actually end up getting deployed. Uh, so I think the deployment work is the key to this um, to getting that that engagement. Uh, there might be more because. The web security people are, um, they've had a lot of people pushing on them about security considerations that they uh, that they don't agree with. And this does expose information to the network in ways that make them uncomfortable. Um, we tried to address all that in the security considerations document, and I think it's a reasonable way to look at things. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Sandy, I saw you in the queue, I think. Or unmuting, maybe. No, because I see that you you will uh, implement the multicast over quick. So uh, if multicast will implement it uh, with uh, with quick, so the will the uh, AMT still be used forever, or um, every multicast will be on quick. Uh, so AMT would still be used for the interdomain transport wherever there's not a, a, a multicast capable peering uh, that that does the so it, it's um, so the way that the uh, the AMT would still be used is um, in quick you would tell the client that hey client please join this multicast group. Um, and then the client would join that multicast group, and then you have your regular, uh, how are you going to transport that multicast? How are you going to do the RPF? How are you going to get it uh, transmitted? Question that we always have with multicast, right? Um, so this can use AMT. It can also use uh, not AMT and, and be, um, you know, it, it should work just fine for uh, connecting to traffic that's sourced within the network, but it also would work uh, with the Dryad extension um, or or with the, in theory with the well-known IP if there's anybody running those relays uh, to ingest the traffic from outside the network um, so uh, we still intend to start with uh, AMT access for interdomain transport um, but it's it should work to do other kinds of transport as well okay thank you Okay. I don't see any, any other questions else for Jake. Do. Any better ideas? Any better I don't love this. I don't love this plan. I wish I had something a little bit better than well. First, I'll go implement a whole quick extension, and then I'll hope that they like it. <laughs> but it's what I've got, so it's at least if you build it, they, if you build it, they will come. How long have you been saying that, Lenny? <laughs> <laughs> the 
because it's the uh, a blind uh, as a broken a broken clock is 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 right twice a day. So at some point we're yes. going to be right about that. Al almost long enough. That's the answer. Yes, yeah. almost long enough. All right. Um, How about uh, yeah, bad bad idea? Whose time has come? I don't know. That's no. I, I you know people don't think this is going to work, but I think that we're really getting a crunch on capacity in some ways. Um, you know, maybe there will be a renaissance in the layer one transport at the last mile and it will make all this obsolete, but um, I don't see it happening. So I, I don't know how else we're gonna get that, the level of demand covered for these peak events. Yeah, I, I think it's worth noting that we're, we're about to have a perhaps a, an inflection point uh, for this topic um, with the NFL um, this this fall, uh, where Amazon Prime has exclusive rights to streaming of Thursday night football games. And you're gonna have audiences of 20 to 40 million simultaneous viewers for three hours a week for 16 weeks a year, 16, 17 weeks a year. And, um, you know, so the other doing that to... with purely with Unicast is is really going to be challenging. So it's I think we're at an interesting point. I think we may have passed the inflection point in some places. Uh, there was a similar situation with the zone in Italy uh, that really began last year, I think, uh, where they got rights to Syria A, which is the um, you know the Italian football uh, most popular routine, and um, they. You know, there's there's been a lot of uh, press about how that went, um, and uh, they they did do some attempt to address it with multicast, as I understand it, but uh, but it seems like it wasn't enough. According to the statements they made last November, um, multicast helped a lot, uh, but they still have a ways to go because it was only in one network, and. Uh, and they needed to do uh, to get kind of more to really meet this, make it satisfactory to their end users. So I think we're past the inflection point, really. Um, but there's still open questions on how it's going to land. Anyway, that's uh, that's all kind of not really protocol work. <laughs> um, OK, so I'm done. Well. Well, in the movies, uh, there's always the the, the one person who um, uh, spends years uh, proactively trying to save the day and gets ignored, and in the end, does save the planet. So, I think we're uh, we're following that script. Um, any other questions for anybody else? Anything anybody wants to add before closing the meeting? Um, for those who, um, for those wondering why we only, why we took two hours, every time I've signed up for one hour slots, we've blown through that. So we took two, but it was a shorter agenda this, uh, this week. So anyway, um, I will close this meeting and we will see everybody in Philadelphia. Thanks for everybody for joining. Max, thanks for taking notes and, uh, sitting in the director's chair and, um, thanks for everybody else. Uh, and look forward to seeing everybody in Philly. Very well. Yeah. Thanks.